Now, I might actually kick off because today is a bit of a shorter session. We're finishing up today at half two, um, but then we have our English Language Centre presentation straight after. So that's going to be a different Zoom link, um, but it's all on the website. So if you want to hop straight over there, please do. So I'm sure there's a lot of familiar faces in here today. Um, I'm Neve from the International Office, and I'm joined by Katie. Hello, everybody. As well as that today, we have Carrie Collins, who some of you might have seen in our earlier workshop on Tuesday about finding accommodation, and Shayam. So Carrie, do you want to introduce yourself? So hi, everyone. I'm Carrie. I'm originally from Chicago, and I am starting my final year of my commerce degree here at NUIG. Thank you, Carrie. And Shayam? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, thanks a lot to NUIG, Katie, and Nia for giving me this opportunity. Uh, well, essentially, I hail from one of the most western parts of India, and I have studied EMSC in Information Systems Management from JE Khan School of Business and Economics. Thank you. So just to give you a run through of how today is going to work, I'm going to give a very quick presentation on some of our tips on finding part-time jobs in Galway. And after that, Carrie and Shayam are going to share some of their experiences. So without further ado, I might just hop into it. So if you just bear with me for two seconds while I share my screen. Now. So can everyone see that? Yeah, okay, cool. So I'm just gonna put on a transcript as well. A transcript. Okay, so finding a part-time job in Galway. So firstly, the places where you might find jobs. So cafes, restaurants, hotels, takeaways, pubs, retail stores, babysitting jobs and cleaning jobs. Now Galway is a very busy city so there are actually so many cafes and restaurants around the place. There are alternatively a lot of hotels and if you don't find a hotel in the city there are a lot of hotels in the surrounding neighborhoods and suburbs that are kind of always looking for new stuff. So how might you find a new job? Well, firstly, obviously online through the company website. So if you identify a, an establishment that you want to work with, you can always send them an email online or go onto their website and check their, we are hiring, sorry, we are hiring or job section. Alternatively, my mouse doesn't seem to be working very well today. Okay, that's just not working. That's okay. One of my other notes was the Galway Advertiser. So the Galway Advertiser is kind of our local newspaper. So they often advertise jobs in the surrounding area. And then thirdly, bulletin stores or bulletin boards in local shops. So there's often, like if you go into your local shop, like Joyce's or Super Value, just outside the stores, there are bulletins where employers advertise jobs. And then the best way, and I'm pretty sure this is how Carrie got her job, if I remember correctly, the best way to get a job is to just rock up to the place. So a cafe or a restaurant or a takeaway or a pub and just ask to speak to the manager and ask them, are you hiring? And my biggest tip with this would be to have your CV ready and on hand um, and have it in a plastic folder just so that it's neat and it's wet by the rain. And yeah, that is, it's pretty straightforward. Just have your CV ready and ready to show them. I'm just gonna exit out of this and go into my next slide because it doesn't seem to be working. So your CV. Oh, it's working now. Oh yeah, 
So also websites to find jobs. So just to show you, this is what a bulletin board would look like in the local shop. And this is just a screenshot of the Galway advertiser. So you can actually filter down by what type of job you're looking for. And then some of the websites that you might find a job are jobs.ie, Indeed, irishjobs.ie, and jobalert.ie. So if I were you, I'd take note of these just to start planning and start having a look at where I might be hiring in the next few weeks. So your CV. So employers in Ireland typically like shorter CVs, one, two pages max. They like it small and compact. They don't want to have to go reading reams and reams of your experience. They just want to know, do you have experience in this field? So some things that you might include are a file and a statement, your contact information, your relevant work experience, key skills relevant to this role. So there's no point in adding a load of skills that don't, that don't apply to this role. Your education, hobbies and interests. I think this is optional for casual jobs and references. And you can put a little note with references um, available upon request. However, when preparing for your CV, we have the Career Development Centre on campus. So this is an excellent resource. I highly encourage all of you to engage with it. And um, their website contains a load of tips on CV essentials, how to lay it out and how to properly structure your, your CV. I mean, what I have there in the left hand side, I, I basically took from there. So do engage with that. And especially while you're studying with us, um, they're great for part-time work as well, but then once you go in looking for a work placement or a job after that, you want to engage with the Career Development Centre. And then getting a PPSN. So some of you might be familiar with this already. We touched on it on, in yesterday's session, but to work in Ireland, you will need a PPSN. So it's basically a public service number. It's just your identity number, which you will use whenever you're engaging with the government. So to apply, you will need a copy of your, so a photo ID, so passport, driving license, etc. Evidence of why you need a PPS number. So your employer will help you by submitting a letter with the details of the job, which you will be undertaking and your start date. So one of the reasons, they, can, they don't just give out PPSN to anyone, you need to have a purpose. And one of the purposes is, is having a part-time job. And also you'll need your student registration with your Galway address on it. So that's all from me. If you have any further questions, please send us an email. Or as I said as well, the Career Development Centre on campus is kind of your first go-to with anything um, career or job related. So without further ado, I might pass over to Kerry. And Kerry, do you want to share some of your insights, how you found a job? Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Neve. Uh, so I was I moved in August 2018, and then I started looking for a job in January 2019. I was just trying to wait till I settled um, just a little bit in Galway and kind of got a feel for what place I might like to work at. Um, so I walked around one day and um, handed in my CV to any place that I saw had a sign on the door. Because usually what a lot of places will do is they'll post a sign just on their front door saying floor staff wanted, waitresses wanted. Um, so you'd go in and you, I just handed my CV in and I was like, could I please speak with the manager? And um, this happened to me and I'd be prepared for it yourself. They do a lot of what they call trials. So they have you come in and I believe legally a trial can only be two to three hours. I actually would have to double check that, but it's it's no more than four. Um, and it's just, you go in and they kind of see how you work. But some days, like when I went in and handed my CV, CV in, I think I had the trial the next day. So just be prepared to have short notice and just come in, do the trial. And if you succeed and they really like what you're doing, you'll probably be on the next schedule. Um, I've been working at a cafe in town called High Cafe for two and a half years now, just about. And I was promoted to manager. So I am actually 
um, I'd be looking over CVs. Uh, so what I would say is the things that I pay attention for is just relevant experience. Even if you have anything like you've worked in a restaurant, you've worked in a cafe or just customer service. And I like the CVs, like Neve was saying, just a bit shorter. Cause we're just like, especially in Galway right now, we're just so busy. I just don't have time to read a whole big long one. So just try to keep it to relevant information. And then if you are from a non-English speaking country, just show that you have some proficiency in English, just put a note there and um, make sure to mention that you're a student so that we know that you're gonna be looking for part-time work probably on the weekends. Um, and try to come in with your CV during the downtime, like when the restaurant doesn't look to be that busy. So if, you, if you're walking around bringing in your CV and you see a place that has a lot of customers, the staff look like they're running around, maybe come back a different day and try to bring it in a different day because you do want to have your best first impression and you don't want to stress them out when they're already quite busy with everything else. So those would kind of be my recommendations and you can always come to me when you uh, arrive and we can talk about a job. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. That was really useful. And I think considering that you've just been promoted to manager, which huge congratulations, you have particularly interesting insights on what the employee looks for on the other side. So thanks a million for that. Um, Sham, do you want to share some of your experiences? Yeah, absolutely. Can you guys hear me now? Okay, yeah. perfect, yeah. So uh, I was working as a teaching assistant in the course of computer science and information technology for the basic and advanced C programming. So absolutely, I have seen a couple of questions in the chat that uh, can we get a job in library or can we get a job in the university itself? So yes, you can get the job. And I have seen a couple of emails. They are already there for the students for 2021 and 2022. Uh, those who, who would like to have a job in the NUIG itself. So just check the NUIG websites and there you can find a lot of job openings for the part-time works like either in library or working as a teaching assistant. So uh, I had basically two jobs, one as a teaching assistant in NUIG and second one as a sales representative in one of the big store stores called Centra. So talking about my TA job where I was responsible to review the assignments and explain the programming concepts to the undergrad students. The TA job has literally helped me in delivering the learned practical insights in my master's where I demonstrated the initiatives and enthusiasm. So you uh, basically for students, we have 20 hours to work. So what I did is I divided my hours in those two jobs. So four hours were occupied on my teaching assistant job and rest of the 16 hours occupied in my customer sales assistant job. So if I talk about my customer sales assistant job, then there I'm working on the tells and frequently helping the customers about the product related queries in, in, a, in, a, in one of the stores here. And a customer sales assistant job expanded my horizon in the communication and helped me to understand the Irish culture. Uh, well, if I talk about a couple of tips to get the job, then as already Nia explained that go and talk to the manager of the store, bar, restaurant directly without any fear and just ask them if there is any openings and hand over your resume along with an electronic communication. Make sure that you also do some couple of the electronic communication as well. And make sure that before you come here, you prepare your resume so that it will save your time, so that it will uh, save a lot of week of time. So you just go outside and wherever you see a bulletin or advertisement like staff required, just go and hand over, hand over your resume and take a follow ups as well in order to get the jobs. You know, this will really help you uh, help you in order to get the job. So yeah, these are the all tips and all the stuff related to part-time job. And we are always here to help you guys. So just shoot the questions or ask us. We are ready to help. Perfect. Thank you, Sham and Terry. Thank you. Um, we don't have very long left. We only have a few minutes in this session, but we do have a little time for questions. Um, but we will have to wrap up at around 27 because we're jumping on to our next workshop. Um, but one of the questions that has come in 
is well, what I've seen a few times is what if it's your first time applying for a job? What I would say in this instance, and you might want to feed into this as well, identify other areas in your life where you've gained skills that you think would be relevant to this job. So if you've never worked as a waitress, but you've done volunteering, well, what skills did you learn from that volunteering that you think are applicable to this role? Um, that's what I would say. Does anyone else have any insights on that? Um, I would say be flexible. So, and, and, you know, have an attitude where you're willing to learn. So, and, and Kerry, you might be able to agree, you know, when you go into a cafe or a bar and somebody asks, have you done this before? No, I haven't, but um, I'm a quick learner. No, I haven't, but if you give me a chance, you know, I, I'd be happy to try it out in a trial for you. Um, and then generally employers will like to see that you're open to being taught. Um, I think Kerry mentioned it as well. You, uh, you could get put on the spot for a trial that day or the next day. So it's good to state your availability and say like, I am available to start as soon as possible. I can come in for a trial whenever it suits you. If that's your case, you know, it might put the employer off if you go in and say, well, actually I can't work on that day and I don't work on Sundays and I can't do this and I can't do that. Um, usually when somebody is looking for, um, for workers, especially in hospitality, there it, it's really fast. So you have to act fast as well. And another thing that I just wanted to touch on, Kerry mentioned, you know, going in at a quiet time in, in restaurants um, between three and five is generally really quiet. Um, the lunch rush is over. The dinner rush hasn't just started. So that's a good time. Sometimes the manager might be there in the morning. So between 10 and 12 might be another good time that you could go in. And um, you'd be surprised the what skills you can use, like in terms of restaurants, just that's my own experience. I think when I first applied for a job at 17, um, I used babysitting because babysitting is a lot of, you know, time management skills. Um, you're balancing a lot of things, organizational. So just whatever, even if it might not be a job experience, but whatever life experience you have, you can always put that on the CV. And at the moment, I'm actually training three girls who have had no um, previous experience in restaurants, um, but they're doing great because they, they want to learn and they're, they're really passionate about it, asking questions and finding out what the best way to do something is. So as long as you have a good attitude and you come in really positively and willing to work, it wouldn't be hard to find a job and keep a job. Yeah, indeed. Uh, like I would say here, uh, I got a TA job in my semester one, and then uh, my professor said that you are doing really well. Would you like to continue in the TA job in semester two as well? So like based on your performance, uh, based on how you work, how you're managing your time, how you're organizing your study and job all together, this will really help you. So make sure that you will do your best whenever you do any kind of part-time job and I came from IT background I've never done the sales representative job but uh, I just put my experience related to like as Katie mentioned that uh, organization skills and communication skills so based on that I got the job even though I have never had experience of uh, working in any of the shop so make sure that you align the roles and responsibility of the part-time job in your CV and you put only those things which are related to the particular job. Um, there is a good question about um, income tax. So yes, your wages will be subject to income tax. So when you sign up with an employer, they will help you get set up on revenue um, for the first time. Your first paycheck will get emergency tax, which you think you've worked so many hours and you're expecting a really yeah. big paycheck and all of a sudden you, your paycheck is tiny. Um, it's because your first paycheck does get subject to emergency tax, but you can claim this back at a later date. Um, there will be a tax workshop run later in the year, so keep an eye out for that. And that can just inform you of, of how to get this money back. Um, I just wanted to mention that the Career Development Centre is an excellent resource. 
and you've mentioned it already, really, really great place to engage with. Um, however, they cannot find part-time work for you. So don't go into them with the expectation that you give them your CV and they're not, a they're not recruitment as such, but they can help you to find a job as in empower you with the skills that you need. Um, when it comes to internships, then they run recruitment fairs where employers would come into the university or you get to network with employers through the Career Development Centre. Um, and they will just they will give you the skills and tools that you need to engage with these employers. So just bear that in mind that, um, you know, they, they can't find the job for you, but they will, will certainly help you to find it. Um, there was another good question in there. How will they pay us either online or to our bank account? And will the payments be monthly or weekly? I think it depends on the establishment. So some places when I was working as a waitress, I got paid weekly. Or some of my friends, I think in more retail spaces, it's, it's standard to get paid monthly. But does anyone else want to chime in on that? Um, yeah, I think yeah. working now I get paid weekly and then, but I've also heard of it, it's uncommon I'd say with restaurants, but some places I've heard of do do monthly wages, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't, I think the monthly is more of a professional level rather than a, um, casual work level. So. Yeah, usually stores, cafes, restaurants pays amount in weekly basis, as far as yeah, uh, I experienced. And like the job such as TA job and uh, any of the NUIG job, they will pay you on the monthly basis. Yeah, it really, it really varies from company to company. Yeah. Um, are there only full-time jobs on campus? Um, no, there are some part-time jobs, but again, I would say that it's less common for students to get positions in the university. So again, you know, I would just manage your expectations there. Um, you know, you're coming into a really dense population of students and um, it's more likely to get employment in the city, which is only a 10 minute walk away. So there's a few areas that you can look for, for jobs. There's the city center, which is a 10 minute walk away. Um, loads of restaurants, shops, supermarkets, and um, there's another area called Salt Hill, which is about 15, 20 minutes walk away. There's lots of restaurants there. And then in, you know, um, different retail areas like the Galway Shopping Centre, the Hedford Road Shopping Centre are also good places to check. And if you live in an area where there's like a local supermarket, like a grocery store or a corner market, you could try there too. But it, yeah, definitely more likely to get part-time work there than in the university. And you need to, I think, wait until I did see a question coming in, should students apply for jobs now? I would wait until you get here for casual employment. Um, employers like to, like to meet you. Um, they generally hire, like Kerry was saying, you know, on the spot or, you know, over the next few days. So, you, you know, you. You can you can relax about that for now and maybe apply then once you get here, once you get set up and get your GNIB card and your bank account, because your employer will want your bank details, your employer will need your PPSN number. You can't do these things, you, you know, they all need to follow. Uh, they, they all follow along, you know, one after the other. You also need an address. Um, the address that you can put on your CV is where you live in Galway. You don't need to put your home country address. Yes, of course, you can you can put the home country where you're from because that's something nice about you. But you don't need to put your, you know, like your family home address, let's say. Um, somebody else has asked, I'm still unclear about what, what I need to apply for a PPSN. So what you would need is a copy of your photo identity document, so your passport, driving license, evidence of why you need a PPS number. So like we touched on, the 
employer can write a letter stating why you need it and your student registration with your Galway address on it. So when you register as a student, you will be inputting your Galway address. Um, and your employer will apply for the PPSN number for you. Um, you won't apply yourself. Okay, yeah. Um, for somebody else, I've seen it a few times about working online and needing a PPS number. If it's for, now I'm not too sure on this, but I think that that would lay in the hands of whichever company you're working with in that, in your home country. So I would check with them on that. Um, that's, yeah, I'm not too sure about that one. Um, somebody else has asked how important is credit history in Ireland? Is PPS essential for getting a good a credit card and eventually a good credit history? You don't need a PPS for to open a bank account, so no. Um, and a lot of the other questions are quite similar. And again, this will be so the, the important thing that you need to do when you come here first is your GNIB mm. before your PPSN number, your PPS number. Your GNIB is more important and that's the first thing that you will do. Um, and that will be covered again in orientation by our colleague Louise, who, and there was a video released yesterday about it as well. Um, and, and that will be dealt with in September and October. So um, put your focus into GNIB first before your PPS and make sure you're comfortable moving countries and getting set up here before you apply for a job. You know, you need to make sure that you're happy and comfortable and then you know once you're set up then you can then you can um head out and find your job absolutely thank you katie so it's just gone 2 30 so i am going to end this call now and i'm going to switch over to the english language center workshop so if you want to join that please feel free to and thank you again carrie sham and katie for all your insights today We'll see, you. we'll see you over there. Thank you, everyone. Bye. All the best, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.